offer uh, to this session. And we, we are thankful that we can enter into uh, his holy rest tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to, to Brother Fred, and, and then we will come back and, and uh, open up the floor uh, for uh, comments about this message and, and, and what you want to share tonight. Hallelujah. The title of the message tonight is Holy Rest. At the beginning of the year, Sherry and I resolved uh, that we would enter into rest and that we would help others uh, enter into rest. And, and we've been uh, faithful in that, but uh, I want to say that God is faithful Amen. and his faithfulness uh, to reveal rest to us. And, and I believe we have some uh, fresh uh, revelation about uh, rest tonight, holy rest. And uh, it's something that we all need. And I know that everybody has an understanding of uh, physical rest, but holy rest is more than that. There, there are two different kinds of rest. There's a, a natural rest and there's a supernatural rest. Mm. And what I'm talking about tonight is supernatural rest, uh, what is called a holy rest. And of course, rest uh, uh, began uh, by God himself. He set the precedent for it. Uh, he he worked uh, six days, created uh, the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything that was in it. And then he, he rested. Now, what was interesting, not only did he rest, but he also called it holy. He blessed the Sabbath and he rested and he called it holy. Uh, so there's blessings in your rest. And so many people get tied up uh, with doing things and then uh, they don't take time to rest and they don't have a good night's rest. And uh, the next morning they, they get up and they take caffeine or whatever it is to, to keep them going, but they haven't rested uh, in the night. But I'm, I'm telling you today that uh, rest is an ongoing and a permanent thing that we're going to talk about and, and discover. Now, the thing about uh, holy rest is that when God blessed it and sanctified it, he set it apart. Hallelujah. When he set it apart, that means that no uh, evil forces can come there. No Hallelujah. spirit of fear, no spirit of heaviness, no spirit of anxiety. Uh, none of those things can enter into holy rest. And, and so he separated them out. Here's the supernatural rest. Here's a physical rest, what a lot of people do, but they don't enter into a holy rest that's separated out from the evil forces and from the things of the enemy, uh, such as fear and anxiety. There's a lot of people that uh, get up in the middle of the night and watch TV because they can't rest. They're, they're just tossing and turning on their, on their bed. Uh, and, and that may come from a spirit of slumber. You know, the New yeah. Testament talks about a spirit of slumber. A spirit of slumber can cause you to be awake when you need to sleep and cause you to sleep when, when you, you need, need to be, be awake. awake. Uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, uh, they get ready to read their Bible and they get sleepy. Well, why? why? Because the spirit of slumber doesn't want you to read your Bible. And a lot of people want to pray, but they get sleepy uh, when they want to pray. And so the spirit of slumber keeps you messed up uh, and not uh, to rest and sleep when you need to. Mm -hmm. So be sure uh, to set aside your life and set aside those times of rest so that you can be in rest, but not just physical rest, because we're going to see that it's much broader. Holy rest is much broader Hallelujah. than just physical rest because there's also you need rest in your mind you ever you worry need, about need. things at night and just keep thinking about things and you need you need rest in your emotions glory to god i'm going to show you how to get it tonight it's called holy rest let's Hallelujah. See, let's see how we enter into this we we see uh from genesis 2 verses 2 and 3 and that's where we're going to start uh, and I'll ask Sherry to read these verses. Okay, this is out of the New American <laughs> Standard. Genesis 2, 2 and 3. By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had, to, which he had done. 
Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because on it he rested from all of his work, which God had created and made. Oh, hallelujah. So he oh, sanctified yeah. it. He made it holy. He separated it out. It's not something that the enemy can come and harass you in the middle of the night if you are involved in holy rest. And I'm going to show you uh, mm -hmm. how to do that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get uh, harassed uh, in that by tormenting spirits, by mm -hmm. a spirit of fear, spirit of mm -hmm. heaviness, uh, all kinds of evil spirits uh, do not want you to rest. Mm -hmm. and, but God wants you to rest. Amen. Why is this such an important message? Because people don't know how to enter into God's holy rest. That they they get so involved in their activities and what needs to be done that they don't take time to rest. But I'm not talking about just physical rest tonight. I'm talking about something much uh, greater than that. And it comes. We're going to see here in. Uh, Exodus 33, 14, I'm going to ask Sherry, it comes from someplace. Holy rest comes from the presence of God. Aren't we? Read this verse, please. Exodus 33, verse 14, and he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Oh, hallelujah. Where does, hallelujah. Where does this rest I'm talking about tonight, where does it come from? From the, the presence, presence of, of the Lord. Lord. Amen. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> You and know, that's what makes it supernatural. Right. It's Praising from the presence of the Lord. There's a lot of people that will lay their head down the night to rest, and they won't have a sound rest. But there's, God has given you all kinds of promises through the Bible about sweet sleep. Sweet sleep. About rest and renewing, renewal and restoring uh, of our uh, soul. And all of that is promised to you, and we need to know how to activate these promises and first of all we need to recognize where god is god hallelujah he worked he created everything in six days on the seventh day he rested and he never got out of rest he is seated in, in heaven heaven, <laughs> in heaven on his throne and yes still at rest hallelujah oh, hallelujah hallelujah and uh then jesus Oh, Jesus came down. Let's just look at how Jesus operated. He'd go up on the mountain, he'd pray, and then he'd get an assignment from God, and he'd come down and fulfill the assignment. And what would he do? He'd go back up the mountain and pray, spend time. So that, and, and we find out Jesus, there were three important things that Jesus did. He said in John 5, verse 19, I can do nothing of myself. Mm -hmm. But you say, oh, he's the son of God. He can do anything. Mm -hmm. But he said, I can do nothing of myself. And then he said also in John 5, 19, I only do what I see my father do. When did he see what the, fa what the father was doing? When he was up on the mountain praying, he was beginning to see what the father was doing. And then he said in uh, John 8, Verses 26 through 28, you'll find out that Jesus said, I only speak what I hear my father say. Mm, hallelujah. So this was the this was really the keys uh, to the way he was always at rest. He, he was never anxious about anything. He was in a boat one day and, and he was back there asleep. On the pillow. On the pillow. And uh, the... The disciples uh, thought, oh, the boat's about to fill up with water and we're all going to drown. And they went back and woke him up. But he slept through the storm. He was sleeping through the storm. And, and they said, don't you care that we're all going to perish here? Mm -hmm. And see, he had so much peace in him. He was at rest in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. Can you rest in the midst of chaos Hallelujah. Uh, going around you? Can you rest? And then, because if you can rest in the midst of the chaos Amen. and in the midst of, a, of the storm, then you can rise like Jesus did and speak to the storm, Hallelujah. Speak Hallelujah. The Hallelujah. storm and it will come to nothing. Amen. It will stop. Amen. The winds will stop. The storm Hallelujah. will stop. Hallelujah. If you've got the peace of God within you, and no, you know, from uh, Isaiah 26, verse 3, it says, He will keep you in, in perfect, perfect peace, whose, whose mind is stayed on thee. Jesus could do nothing of himself. 
He only did what he saw the Father do. He only spoke what he heard the Father say. That's the way we need to operate. If we're going to operate at a higher level of rest, we need to realize that we can do nothing of ourselves. That's John 15. Jesus said, I'm the vine, and you're the branches. And apart from me, you can do nothing. We can do nothing of ourselves. And then we need to speak what we hear heaven say Amen. by the Holy Spirit. Woo! And we need Woo! to do what is heaven saying. What I love heaven, you. See heaven do it by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll be just like Jesus and we'll be at rest. Glory to God. Now, where is Jesus? Well, he, he fulfilled his assignments. And, and he was constantly <laughs> in that relationship with the Father that he never did anything except what he saw the Father do. He never spoke any words except what he heard the father say he was at rest he was at peace and uh, uh constantly and that's why his words were with so much power hallelujah and if we hallelujah. can say it like, 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 be like with, with power, power like he is well so what happened with jesus well he finished on uh uh, John 19, verse 30, he said, it's finished. On the Hallelujah. Cross, his, his, assignments, his assignments, his divine assignments, is finished. It's all finished. And where is he today? He's seated. Oh, oh he was 10, 12, said he's seated. Oh, 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 oh right hand God. of God. Oh, hallelujah. So where is God? Well, he ceased from his works. He's resting on his throne. And Glory to God. Where's Jesus? Well, he did his divine assignments. So God fulfilled his divine plan. Jesus fulfilled his divine plan. And they're both seated in heavenly places. And where are you? Well, Ephesians 2 6 <laughs> says, Ephesians 2 6 says, we're seated in heavenly places in Christ. Now, position of seating, being seated, on a throne, that puts you in a position of rest. If you're in turmoil, if your mind's in turmoil, you're not seated. You're not seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that in heaven, it, everything's about rest. Glory to oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. See, the Sabbath That's good, was baby. given. That's the good. Sabbath was given, and, and people tried to make themselves approved of God. They wanted to do things that would be approved of God. That was their work. That was the work they were trying to do. And they also try to narrow it down to one day out of the week, whether it's Saturday or whether it's Sunday. And you might want to ask, well, is it Saturday or is it Sunday? Well, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Sabbath is not Saturday. What? It's not Sunday. Sunday. The Sabbath is Jesus. What? Hallelujah. That's Jesus is our Sabbath. Hallelujah. If you're seated in him, with him, you are at rest. Glory. Hallelujah. At rest with him. Set you free. At rest, at rest with him. You know, the, the, the Ten Commandments uh, had this statement in, keep, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Well, let me ask you, how do you keep the Sabbath holy? Well, it's not by rules and regulations. That's right. They came up with so many rules and regulations. Even today, they try to adhere to a bunch of rules and regulations, but that doesn't make the Sabbath holy. Rules and regulations, and, and I'll give you this example. Um, the Jews can ride an elevator up and down on the Sabbath day, but they can't push the, the button. button. They can't push the button to ride <laughs> To get the bus, to get the elevator door to come up, <laughs> and, and so they if get somebody on, pushes the button, it has to be a, fil a filthy gentile, gentile. Uh, because the Jews can't do that. Uh, that's how ridiculous rules and regulations are that try to make the Sabbath holy. You know what makes the Sabbath holy? Jesus oh, makes hallelujah. the Sabbath hallelujah. holy. Glory, the presence of God. See. Uh, uh, in, in Exodus 33, uh, verse 14, which Sherry just read, it says, from his presence. presence. Oh, 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 and I'm going to give you rest. Yeah, from my presence. I'm going Thank to go you, with Jesus. you. My presence is going to go with you, and I'm going to give you rest. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. But I want you to know that the, that the New Testament 
still talks about the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And let's look at um, Hebrews 4, 9. And we'll first do it out of the New American Standard, but I've got another translation I want to also look at. Okay, this one is uh, okay. New American Standard. Mm -hmm. There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Okay, so this is New Testament. Hebrews, that's the New Testament. So there's still a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Mm. So this is New Testament. So something happened. Something happened at the cross. Things changed. Before the cross, people were doing works uh, and the Sabbath to make themselves approved of God. But after the cross, see, the Sabbath came through it, but it came through it in a different form. Came through Hallelujah. The cross, came through it in a different form. Mm -hmm. And here, and there's still a Sabbath rest, but it's Jesus Christ is our Sabbath rest. rest amen. <laughs> I want to also read this verse mm -hmm. out of the Passion Translation. There's some really important things I want to get here. Okay. So we conclude that there is still a full and complete Sabbath rest waiting for believers to experience. Okay. Let's pause there for a moment. Mm, okay. Now, there's several words here describing rest. Full mm -hmm. and complete. Complete. Sabbath rest. Mm -hmm. And I and I'm going to call it a holy rest. Mm -hmm. A full and complete holy rest. And, and it means more than just a physical rest. It's much more than a physical rest. This is much more than laying your head on your pillow and, on, and sleeping at the night. It's much more than that. It's a full rest. Mm. It's a complete rest. Mm -hmm. It's a Sabbath or a holy rest. And that's what we're talking about. Though. So let's get that in mind. We're talking about a holy rest today that is full. It's complete. And it's much greater than a physical rest. So let's go ahead and mm -hmm. keep reading this passage. As we enter into God's faith, rest, life. Let's oh, I love this <laughs> phrase here. This is from the Passion Translation. Yeah. He's talking about a faith, faith rest, rest life. life. See, in Jesus Christ, we are no longer doing works to get God's approval. That's what the Sabbath, that's what the way people saw in the Old Testament uh, and the people that are under the law. They're trying to get approval, uh, God's approval. They're trying to do things they can ride an elevator up and down, but they can't push the button. So they don't want to get have God's disapproval. They, they want to do things. And so they came up with a bunch of rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. And we don't, and that's not our situation. Our situation is that we are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. 2 Amen. Corinthians 5, uh, 17 or 21, 21, I guess, says, uh, uh, for he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So all of a sudden, our works to get God's approval uh, don't exist anymore. It's all about what Jesus did, and we have to be in Jesus. And that's where our rest is. Amen. Okay, go ahead, Sherry. It says that we, we enter into that faith rest lifestyle when we cease from our own works, just as God celebrates his finished work and rest in them, so then we must eager be eager to experience this faith rest lifestyle so that no one falls short by following the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. See, a lot of people, the people in the Old Testament, the descendants of Israel, they couldn't enter into the promised land. They couldn't enter into rest because of doubt and unbelief. So in order for us to enter into a holy rest, it has to be through belief. It's not for, through doubt and unbelief. But I tell you, if, a, if an unclean spirit is harassing you, you're going to have doubt and unbelief thrown at you. That's right. <clears throat> so we have to realize that Jesus Christ is our holy rest. And, and now we're not doing works to get God's approval, but what we are doing 
We're being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. What is the Holy Spirit doing? What does he want to do through me? Because we want, and I'm talking about all of us, we want to participate in what God is doing. I mean, See, a lot of I mean, people, they're going to wait and say, well, I need somebody to tell me whether there's an awakening ongoing or not. <laughs> a lot of people say, well, my pastor has to determine whether or not there is an awakening Goodness. ongoing. But let me tell you, mm. hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, you're all a part of the awakening. the awakening. If you want to be a part of what God is doing, that's what God is doing in this day, in this hour. He's bringing forth a revival and a, an awakening all over the earth. Are you going to be prepared for it? Mm -hmm. This holy rest helps prepare you. Yes, keeps that's you right. sensitive. That's right to the Holy Spirit, sensitive to what the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit. Hallelujah! Because all of that other junk is, is is discarded. So we're not so concerned. We're not concerned about getting God's approval for who we are or what because it's all in Jesus Christ when he looks at you he sees the blood of Jesus Christ and, and so he's going to be excited about seeing you come into his presence uh, because it's all about the blood over us that makes us acceptable in the beloved amen, amen. In, in the, the beloved, beloved now by the blood of Jesus Christ because it's by his blood We've been redeemed and we have been made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. This is really an important message. We yeah, all need. That's right. We need to be able to rest. We need to walk in rest at all yeah. times. Because if we realize Jesus Christ is our holy rest, our Sabbath rest, where is he seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places? That's a position mm -hmm. of rest. Where are you seated at the right hand of the Father? So what we're doing, what we do today in these days mm -hmm. are the assignments that the Holy Spirit Yes, has amen, us. amen. Oh, Lord, yeah, we're doing what we see heaven do, uh, and we're speaking what we hear from heaven by the Holy Spirit, and we realize we can do nothing on our own. That's who we are, and when we're just like Jesus Christ. As he is, so, so are we earth. in this earth. And that was the pattern he set down for us. He he couldn't do anything of himself. He only spoke what he heard the Father say. He only did what he saw the Father do. And when he'd fulfill an assignment, he'd go back in the mountain, spend time in prayer. And, and why is rest so important? Because the Holy Spirit in, energizes us in rest. Mm. God, mm. this is why. This rest, the, yeah, holy, the rest. holy rest, holy rest is so important. God wants you to be continually energized by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that's the only way you're going to Hallelujah. be that way is by staying at rest, not trying to do things that will get God's approval uh, because you are already approved mm. in, in the beloved. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but you know, I hallelujah. haven't covered all the verses I want to cover. I want Sherry to look at Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, I believe. <clears throat> were, this is a very familiar passage. Come unto me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon <laughs> you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. For my yoke is comfortable and my burden is light. See, this holy rest I'm talking about is an umbrella that encompasses a lot of things. Oh, hallelujah. Physical rest. Yes. Emotional rest. Yes. Mental rest. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, your soul is your, uh, your mind, mind, your will, your, and your emotions mind yes. will and emotions and so this holy rest that i'm talking about includes it, it's a big umbrella it encompasses physical rest rest for the mind rest for the emotions rest for the will mm. uh, it includes all of those things now most most people haven't even considered that there's any kind of rest other 
than physical rest, the kind of rest that you get by sleeping at night. That's just a fraction of it, just a small portion of it. And we need to believe, uh-oh, here it comes. Mm. We need to believe for a holy rest, Hallelujah. something that is greater, a, a supernatural rest that includes every aspect of our lives, Hallelujah. not just our physical rest at night. But it needs to include our souls. That's what Jesus said. Right. He said, I've got a rest for you. Mm -hmm. that, that a rest for your soul. A rest for your soul. It's not just your physical rest. Physical rest is very, very important. We all know that. But did you know that rest for your soul is very, <laughs> very, <laughs> very important? See, I, I so love that phrase uh, that the Passion Translation had. Uh, there in Hebrews 4, verses mm -hmm. 9 through 11, it talks about a faith, faith rest, rest lifestyle. lifestyle. And when you find that faith rest lifestyle, let's let's apply it to Isaiah 58. Isaiah, Isaiah 58 talks about things that we, we're devoted, devoted activities to God, like fasting and the Sabbath and, and all of those. And, and he said in Isaiah 58, he said, he's talking about the rest. And, and if we find this faith, rest, lifestyle, if we can embrace that and, and live in that, glory to mm -hmm. God, th then it says you'll uh, loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy oh, burdens, yeah. to let the oppressed go free, that you break every, every yoke. See, you'll be doing all of those things. It'll be, be not in your own strength, but, you, but it also said that, a passion, a pass, a passion. Pass. No, 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 no. Passage. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I, I, I was thinking about passion, but in that passage, he said, "I'll guide you." So, how are you able to uh, or do all of those things? Because God is guiding oh, us hallelujah. by the by Spirit. Spirit. And, and so, when we find this faith, rest, lifestyle. You know, some other things that are going to happen besides what we do, those will be divine assignments. But in addition to that, it, it says that our light will shine. And mm -hmm. come on, listen to this one. Okay. Your healing will spring forth speedily. Ooh, hallelujah. You, you might hallelujah. think, oh, I, I've been uh, praying and praying for my healing and it hasn't come. But, but I want you to consider, have you found a faith rest a lifestyle because when you find this faith and you embrace it you catch hold of this what i'm talking mm -hmm. to you about tonight when you take catch hold of this faith rest lifestyle then your healing will spring forth speedily Ooh, hallelujah and the glory of god will be your rear guard yeah. Oh, listen to me. And you'll mm -hmm. restore the foundations that have been broken down and you'll be the repair of the breach and you'll be the restore of streets to Jesus. dwell on. I That's why you know. I've got such a, a, big, a vision for cities and for uh, regions and nations is because God gave me Isaiah 58 and, Amen. and he gave me the keys to unlock it. Hallelujah. That we need a faith rest lifestyle Amen. Amen. and then our healing is going to break forth speedily Hallelujah. then our light will shine then the glory of god will be our rear guard and then Hallelujah, we'll restore the Hallelujah. broken foundations and we'll restore the streets Hallelujah. of the cities, cities to dwell in glory to god this is an Amen. important message today it's good I good you, good i hope you can catch hold of it Hallelujah. we need rest so many people just uh, just barely get by with a, enough rest to get up the next day and to go about and do the same thing over and over again. But they're not being energized in the presence of the Lord by his spirit Amen. continually being energized. And that's what this message is about. This message will cause you to arise and awake oh, hallelujah. what God is doing. Hallelujah, part hallelujah. Of what he's doing. You'll cease from your own works trying to get approval, but you'll enter into his rest and you'll stay there. It's a permanent rest. It's a place of permanent rest. 
It, it's not something you do on a Saturday. It's not something you do on a Sunday. It's a place of permanent rest because Jesus is the Lord of our Sabbath Hallelujah. and he is our Sabbath rest, our Amen. holy rest. Holy rest. Thank Be you, seated Jesus. with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't Hallelujah. go forth until you've sought the face of the Lord. Amen. Find out what Amen. you're saying for this yes. and go and fulfill it and then stay in that rest. Hallelujah. This holy rest comes out of fulfilling God's divine assignments, just like God fulfilled Amen. the divine Amen. plan and rested. Jesus fulfilled the divine plan and rested. You fulfilled, fulfilled the divine, divine plan. plan and rest. Stay in rest. Amen. rest. Amen. It's not something that you're, uh, one day you get some rest or maybe on the weekend you, you, you just grind, grind, grind all week and then maybe on the weekday you just have, don't have any more energy and you just sleep through the day and, and think that's going to and be enough energy uh, for you for another week. Don't don't do it. I'm talking about a holy rest, mm -hmm. a rest for your physical body, yeah. a rest for your uh, soul, for your mind, mm -hmm. your will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for being here with us tonight. I'm going to share. Thank you, Jesus. You may have something to say. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to go back to the uh, the beginning prayer that uh, Sister Rebecca. Um, brought forth and that was she talked about uh, the plans of the Lord and the plans of the Lord for each one of us are good plans and he is faithful he is faithful to provide when he tells you to do something when he tells you to go somewhere or speak uh, out uh, something that he has told you then he is faithful he is faithful to be there with you he is faithful to never leave you nor forsake you. He's faithful uh, to provide any type of resources that you need. Uh, if he tells you to go out on the street, oh, hallelujah, Ruth, that's, that's Papa there with you. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Uh, but when God tells you to do something, he provides everything that you need to complete that assignment. And part of what he provides is this holy rest that Brother Fred has brought forth tonight. You know, many people say, well, I, I know about rest. I know that there's a rest. And, and but do they know that, you know, and we ask the Lord, you know, why, why is your holy rest so important for those that are uh, participating in the awakening? And I believe that this group of individuals you are leaders, and I believe that you are the on the cutting edge of what God is doing. Do you believe that? I believe that. Yes, I do believe that every single one of you, you are here because you desire the word, but you're also here because you are participating in what God is doing in the earth today. You want to, you want to know what he's doing. You want to be part of what he's doing, and uh, that desire uh, he loves uh, that desire, and I believe that he puts that desire in us uh, to do his will and to fulfill his plan. Hallelujah. But also I want to just, just reiterate or remind or, or repeat uh, what Brother Fred said, and that is after Jesus, he, he had an assignment. Uh, maybe it was to go by the well. The, and and speak to the the woman at the well. He had an assignment from the Lord, and then after he finished that assignment, he went back into the presence of God. Now he had to, you know, he went back to the mountain. He went back. You don't necessarily have to go back to the mountain. You can go, you know, to your bedroom or whatever, wherever you go into the presence of the Lord. That's the important thing. And, and when we go back into the presence of the Lord, then he renews us, he refreshes us, he energizes us, and he gets us ready for the next assignment. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you tonight, if you don't, you say, well, I don't know that I've ever had an assignment from the Lord, a specific assignment, then I want you to believe the Lord for that. I want you to ask the Lord, give me an assignment to do. Hallelujah. It may mean, you know, that you make hot dogs and take them down on the square and, and, and give them out to the homeless people. 
Hallelujah. That's where this ministry started. So despise not small beginnings. Well, I want to do something big for God. Well, you know, a hot dog is big. I love hot dogs. Hallelujah. And so do the people on the street. They love hot dogs. And so, you know, whatever it is that the Lord tells you to do. Uh, this past week, we were on assignment. Uh, it took us most of the day to complete it. But we went one place to establish a righteous altar back to the Lord. Um, and, and we did that. And the, and, and the Lord was pleased with that. And then he sent us on down the road to a battlefield uh, where I literally heard the cries of the people uh, cry out from that battlefield. And we were to speak peace and we were to ask for forgiveness for the disaster that that battle was uh, in here in the state of Georgia. Uh, young men and old men uh, were, were slaughtered. And the Lord said, I want that place redeemed. I want peace to be brought to that region uh, in the name of Jesus. And I literally heard, we went on, we began to walk the battlefield and I heard the cries coming out of the ground, just like Abel's uh, uh, blood cried out to the Lord, uh, you know, redeem me, redeem me. Let me go in peace. Hallelujah. And that's, and you know, that was an assignment from the Lord. I'm just giving you that as a, as an example. You know, what are you willing to do for the Lord? What are you willing to do for the Lord? We all have our own agendas. We all have every single day we do a certain thing. And, and you know, but this faith rest lifestyle is exciting. You will never be bored when you, <laughs> when you are in this faith rest lifestyle. Because the Lord will send you. He will send you. Are you a sent one? I'm a sent one. Hallelujah. I believe every one of you are sent ones. Praise the name of Jesus. So let's let's be encouraged tonight to enter into the holy rest of God. Praise the Lord.